good morning welcome back to my channel my name is Mina uh, this is Merkwood Homestead if you're new here I share all my random adventures here at home in the garden and with my farm animals and today I have a seed haul video for you I went crazy buying seeds this year January is uh, the time when all the seed companies come out with their seed catalogs everybody's got the new and odd rare seeds coming out and also it's my birthday month so I go a little crazy. Well I did this year and that might be because I had a really bad gardening year last year and also I like to collect things. I try to keep my stuff as minimal as possible but when it's something like seeds and you can just get just a whole bunch and stick them in a binder and it's kind of difficult to say no especially i ordered from mi gardener for the first time this year and i absolutely loved the whole experience their website is wonderful their customer service is amazing and their seed prices y'all are great they're all two dollars a packet and you get more seeds from them than you would anywhere else your the value for your money is insane and i think a lot of their stuff right now is out of stock but um they're working to get it back in stock i'm not sponsored by any of these seed companies but i just wanted to share with you the cool stuff that i picked up and most of these i have not tried some of the varieties i have tried so i'm gonna go over why i bought what i did and uh the ones that i have tried i'll share with you why i like them so much so let's start. All right, let's start with In My Gardener. So I ordered from both Baker Creek and In My Gardener, mostly from In My Gardener because their seed price is amazing and their tomato selection is outstanding. And so that's what I'm going to share with you first because we're all excited about tomatoes. Tomatoes are my favorite thing to grow. Um, they're, they're easy, they're fun, the varieties that you can get, it just makes the whole experience so much fun. Different shapes, different colors, different flavors, everything. And there's something like 2,000, more than 2,000 heirloom tomato varieties that you can, that you can find. So, we're gonna start here. I've got a pineapple tomatillo. I've never had pineapple tomatillos. We love tomatillos here in this house, especially Sean, and he loves pineapples, so this said that it has a little bit of um, a pineapple taste, and it's yellow. That's fun. Tomatillos are different from tomatoes where you can grow one tomato plant and get tomatoes. With tomatillos, you have to have a pollinator plant, so you have to at least have two. I grew the the Grio Grande tomatillos <clears throat> the last few years they're excellent great for salsa they're delicious and they're super producers so if you just have two tomatillo plants you're gonna have plenty of tomatillos to do you and I have some purple tomatillos which like I said I had a bad gardening year last year so I didn't get any from them but we're gonna try this year we're gonna try all three of those varieties uh the purple the pineapple the Rio Grande, which is like a really big green tomatillo, which is what you normally would see salsa verde made out of. Really fun. Red Centiflor. Never had this one either. So this can have as many as 40 tomatoes per cluster. These are very small tomatoes, but extremely heavy yields. I read these descriptions and I'm like, all right, I'm looking at flavor. I'm looking at how, what the yields are going to be. And they all get me. It's a delicious flavor. Okay, I'm sold. Uh, you're going to have a ton of tomatoes. All right, I'm sold. So let me just buy all the tomatoes you have. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Red Scent Floor. This is going to have, it says, be prepared to share this variety with friends. All right. I'm excited about this one. So my plan for tomatoes is uh, that little plot out in the backyard that you guys saw me dig up and and spread compost about you can check out that video that's gonna be my tomato and pepper garden and I'm probably gonna have more tomatoes and peppers spread out throughout the other gardens but that one specifically I'm gonna have like one of each variety because once you see how many varieties of tomatoes and peppers I have you're gonna be like wow this girl's crazy crazy tomato lady over here but yeah so I'm gonna do one or two of each of these varieties in that garden I'm going to compare them all if this year goes good 
last year was so wet. Everything was so wet, so disease was awful. And the splitting on the tomatoes was really bad, inconsistent water and stuff like that. But one of each of these tomato plants, we're going to compare them. Hopefully I can get some of that good content out there for you guys. I want to save the seeds because... I mean, why not? If the if you have those resources at your disposal, let's save the seeds, right? I don't really want to have any crosses. Now, crosses can be really fun. So, like, you can mix all kinds of stuff. But if you don't want to cross your tomatoes and you want to save your seeds, you can take little jewelry bags and you can tie them on to the flower clusters before they open. And then after they open and you start getting little tomatoes on there, you take it off, you mark it with a string, and then you save your seeds from that particular cluster of tomatoes. And that's how you get the tomato that you're growing instead of a cross between you know, a cherry tomato and a beefsteak tomato, which could turn out to be really delicious. And the good thing about saving seeds is, I mean, you get a stronger seed every time you grow in your environment. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. But anyway, the next one is an Isis candy tomato. Uh, it says super fruity and sweet. Reminds you of why can tomatoes are considered a fruit. Uh, they're just beautiful. I love cherry tomatoes. Um, yeah, so it sold me on that. Tigerella tomato. These are a little bit bigger. Expect large yields. That's probably why I got it. Actually, it says more cold hardy than other varieties and thrives in humid, humid summers. Disease resistant and grows well in greenhouses. Uh, with my experience with diseases last year and splitting and cracking and um, all that stuff. Of course, I got that one. I'm going to say this wrong. I know I am. The Wapsipinican peach tomato. So this is actually fuzzy like a peach. It says one of the best tasting yellow tomatoes in the world and it's a two bite variety. So these are small but they're fuzzy. Come on. How can I not pass that up? Japanese black trifel. I have grown these. These are delicious. Uh, they're a pear shaped tomato. They kind of look like a paste tomato. It's perfect for canning. The, it maintains its color through the canning process. These are delicious. So, and they're highly prolific. Um, when I grew those a couple years ago, I had a ton. Now, we've got the Ukrainian purple tomato. It's an heirloom from Ukraine. A plum-shaped variety, sweet, meaty, and crack-resistant. That's probably why I got this one, crack-resistant, because I had so much trouble with cracking last year. The carbon tomato is one of the most prolific uh, tomato varieties in its category. Sweet and smoky taste profile. Sweet and smoky. Uh, of course, that's why I got that. This one is the Ananase Noir. I know I'm saying that wrong, but it's also known as the Black Pineapple Tomato and anything with the word pineapple in it, I just went ahead and got because Sean loves pineapples and even though he doesn't like tomatoes, I'm like, I'm gonna grow that for Sean. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is from Belgium. Lovely tie-dyed burgundy red and green interior. Smoky acidic and sweet flavor profile. Perfect for sauces and salads. And who doesn't love a colorful tomato in their garden? This is the Ivan tomato. So this was cultivated by a Missouri family for years until they were no longer able to farm and there was something called the Ivan tomato project that was picked up and rescued. I, I bought some seeds from the Ivan tomato project several years ago. Um, and they were really good. Uh, but I actually have not had the Ivan tomato. It was a different variety of tomato. Uh, but anyway, you will need substantial support with these plants. They'll fill your baskets. This one is my favorite. I grew this a couple years ago. And it is the best tasting tomato that I have ever had. It is the Paul Robeson tomato. World famous variety for its prize, prize for its dynamic flavor and eye catching color. Slightly flattened beef steak variety with smoky, earthy flavor. Delicious. Really like the best tomato I have ever tasted. Giant Belgium. I think I just got it because look how pretty this picture is. It's just a big beef steak tomato. Um, it says harvest before the pink color reaches the top of the fruit. Ohio heirloom. So. Just a big slicer. These I have had. This is a Jubilee tomato. I got this for my papa. These are his favorite tomatoes. He's set on not setting out a garden this year, but I think he's still going to put up a couple tomato plants around his shed, and these are his favorite. He loves to tell me 
so about how th this is the best tomato juice he has ever made in his entire life and he says I know you wouldn't think yellow tomato juice would be good but it is so these are for you Pavel I know he's never gonna see this video he's not on the internet but um this 1943 variety is a classic heirloom from the south Louisiana is known for growing these large numbers for juice with its sweet low acidic quality so it is grown for juice I'm not sure if he knew that or not but I guess I guess he just had an idea. These are these are delicious. I have had these. He is right. They're very sweet. The Abe Lincoln tomato. I've not had this one, but I have heard a lot of homesteaders review this one and say that it is delicious. Cultivated in the 1920s by a farmer from Abe Lincoln's home state. It says it's great for homemade ketchup. The triple the triple crop. Also not had this one, but have heard rave reviews from other gardeners. It's supposed to like have like three bushels of tomatoes per plant and just an insane amount with clusters of three to five tomatoes. I wanted to try this one out just to see what they were talking about. And Boxcar Willie. I, I just got this one because it says it may, it's wonderful for canning sauces and juices. So it's just like a classic tomato. Now on to the peppers from M.I. Gardener. We got the Giant Marconi. This one is a sweet pepper, just a big Italian heirloom sweet pepper. Love that. Never had it, but excited to try it. This is a coral bell pepper, just an orange bell pepper. Never really had luck with bell peppers, but I'm hoping this year is my year. I don't know how to say this. Uh, the Bequin, the Bequino, um, <coughs> yellow. My cats are going crazy in there. They like to fight and play, but anyway, I don't know how to say this one. But I can tell you why I got it. It's just got a, it says hot, but it's just got a little bit of heat. Uh, and it's used for pickling. It says slight smoky heat and tart flavor. I got this to pickle. And look how cute they are, just tiny little peppers. I would assume that one plant would probably, you know, work out pretty well. This one is supposed to be really hot. I don't think I realized that until after I got it. I like hot peppers but there's a limit <laughs> and i've actually been eating a lot more spicy food over the last six months or so than i normally have so maybe by the time summer rolls around i'll be prepared for this this is a jamaican yellow mushroom pepper i got it because look how beautiful it is it says citrusy fruity pepper bright and hails from jamaica it's very hot its exterior scent is reminiscent of a yellow bell pepper but do not be fooled by it's packed with spiciness inside this one never had it seen a lot of great reviews. It's a hot pepper. I think a lot of people also pickle these. It says um, on good years they can produce 70 to 80 peppers per plant in northern growing season and um, in southern states would have even better yields. So that's where we are. We're in a southern state. So hopefully one plant will give me plenty of cherry, large red cherry peppers. I almost said tomatoes. This is a big gem pepper. It also says it's hot but it's i don't i think when i was reading in comparison to a jalapeno it is hello maple it is milder than a jalapeno my dog just opened the door do you want to say hello say hello to everybody <laughs> that is maple i'm gonna get her out of here before she decides she's gonna knock over the camera because she's crazy all right that is all the peppers from emma gardner so here are two bean varieties that i decided to get i have never grown drying beans i've always just grown beans for canning like green beans <laughs> and just eating fresh and i guess i just kind of figured how could i grow as many be like so many beans that I have would have enough to dry them you know but I wanted to mix these in with my green bean patch this year and just see if we could do it so we've got the calypso bean and they look like little whales they're also known as the orca bean and once dried they resemble a handful of baby whales so come on how could I not get that it says smooth texture and flavor it will take in any spices you want to surround them with great for baking and soups so then we have the jacob jacob's cattle's bush beans maple's gonna come in here and open the door again i got both of these specifically because they are bush beans i don't really have any trellises this year i didn't want 
I didn't want to have to build any or buy any trellises. So we're going to do bush beans. And I normally have really good luck with bush bean variety green beans. So that's what, that's what we're going for here. This heirloom bush bean is native to North America with its impressive red and white speckles has a flavorful history. Passed down through generations of farmers, this bean is easy to grow and even better for the gardener with limited space or, or a raised bed. Excellent dry bean that holds its shape during cooking, making it perfect choice for soups and stews. And look how pretty they are. They do look like cows. <laughs> and these look like whales. How even. They're beautiful. Even if I just get a few to save the seeds from, I'll be happy with that. So now just moving on to the other seeds that I got. I got a couple flowers. I got the chocolate cherry sunflower. I am fairly certain that I got gifted some seeds years ago, like seven or eight years ago. I don't know what kind of uh, sunflowers they were, but when they bloomed, they were black. I mean, black. I have never seen a black sunflower before and it was the most beautiful flower I have ever grown. Um, and I saved seeds from that sunflower and the flowers that came from it were yellow. But <laughs> that was disappointing. I think, I have searched the internet and I think that it was a chocolate cherry sunflower. So I'm hoping that I get some more black sunflowers because they were beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, maybe I can find a picture and put it up here and show you. These are a sun gold tall, tall sunflowers. So it's a giant teddy bear sunflower. I've never grown teddy bear sunflowers, but I think they're really pretty. I want to grow just a ton of sunflowers this year. Last year, I did an experiment. Hello, Mabel. I did an experiment, and I took a scoop full of black oil sunflower seeds, um, just that I normally feed the goats, and I threw them in the garden, and I had a beautiful spread of sunflowers, and I cut them and made bouquets and everything. They were so pretty. So I'm going to do that again this year, and I'm going to mix some other sunflower varieties in with them, um, and I think that that will turn out just great. She's just going to stay in here with me, so I guess. As long as she's not loud and she doesn't destroy the room, I don't mind. She's still a puppy, so. And she's a boxer, so they're kind of always puppies, but. Moving on, we've got Black Magic Kale. I just thought it was beautiful. I love kale. I know some people are kale no and kale yes. I'm kale yes. Love kale. All right, next up, I have basil. Last year, me and Sean found out that we love basil tea. We got that idea from Jess at Roots and Refuge. You can check out their YouTube channel. They're, I'm sure that if you found my video, you know who Roots and Refuge is because they're the, one of the biggest gardening channels on YouTube. But I got the idea from her and it is, it's delicious. Uh, I did not expect Sean to enjoy it so much. He's kind of a picky eater, but it was his favorite. The basil tea was. Halfway through the summer, I ordered just a ton of different varieties of basil and actually had quite a few grow substantially towards the end of the summer and we had different flavors of basil tea. It was delicious mixing all the flavors together. Um, I think the one that I enjoyed the most, I think it's called Blue Spice. It's some something blue. Some kind of blue is in the word, uh, in the name. And it had almost a vanilla-y flavor to it. So if you can find that, go for it. I got this. It says that it grows in just like a round, like a, a globe, because it is called Spicy Globe. I thought that it would be beautiful to put in with the tomatoes and around the house. It'd be kind of ornamental and also edible. So love that. I've, I've got a couple other basil varieties that I have bought from. Um, I think I got one other from Baker Creek. But anyway, got some okra country hill. Uh, last year I grew some okra. I mean, it did pretty good. I love okra. Other people around here in, you know, at my mom's in here, they don't really care for okra. I had never had it f eaten fresh and I ate it fresh for the first time and it's actually really good. Okra is really good for your digestive system. So yeah, especially when you eat it raw. I just wanted to try this variety. I think last year I tried the Clemson Spineless because I got, got like the 20 cent seeds from Walmart, which those 20 cent seeds, they grew, they, every single one of them sprouted. They were really good. Excuse you, ma'am, puppy dog. Anyway, we got Casper eggplant. Never in my life have I ever had success with eggplants, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I got it because it says great in stir fries, Italian dishes with its mushroom-like silky uh, texture and flavor. So, yep, I love mushrooms and that just seemed good. The, the flea beetles normally get them, so maybe I can 
uh, think ahead and try to keep them from getting it. I got a Space spa, blah, 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 space Master 80 Cucumber. I got these because they're good for growing in pots and stuff. Um, I figured I'd start a couple for my papa since he said he didn't want to have a garden. Maybe he could put these in a pot on his porch. Then I got a Tender Sweet Orange Watermelon. I grew watermelon for the first time last year. I had like one and it wasn't ripe. But I have faith that eventually I'm going to be able to successfully grow a watermelon. So, I got these just on a whim. We're going to see. They look delicious. I had an amazing year last year for pumpkins. I grew the Jaredale pumpkin. And they highly recommend. I'm going to be growing them every year for the rest of my life. As long as I have a garden. Because... They produce an insane amount of pumpkins. They're delicious. They're beautiful. They're these big greenish blue pumpkins with bright orange flesh on the inside. They taste amazing. They freeze well. They keep well. The goats love them. They're really good animal fodder. So highly suggest those. So I wanted to try more pumpkins this year like that. I got this, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It's French. But it's also called the Cinderella pumpkin because uh, it was used as a model for illustrating Cinderella's magical coach. It says plant yields three to five pumpkins that weigh anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. I wanted some color because, you know, I had all blue green pumpkins last year. Beautiful. But I want to add some more color to it. So we got that. And I think I got another pumpkin variety. Anyway, that is all from In My Gardener. Amazing customer service. Uh, extremely affordable the amount of seeds you get in their packets I cannot say enough good things about this company go check them out for sure um, before I move on to Baker Creek I got these um, <clears throat> I got a few seeds from Etsy this is just one little pack I don't remember where I got this from I just wanted to share these corona peppers or they're also called space peppers sorry about that my camera died i got these from etsy uh, i don't remember the name of the store but these were very interesting to me if you google it i'm pretty sure their store comes up because i haven't seen them anywhere else these are called a corona pepper um or a space chili um they were they were created by chinese astronauts and they grew them in space and this person just explained how they just keep getting bigger and bigger every year they grow them so i think it's like a I, mean, I don't remember if it's a sweet pepper or maybe slightly spicy i didn't get anything too spicy from them and then i got i am not sure which what this is i know it's a big red pepper but they sent me this free pepper variety here which is explosive embers and it's like an ornamental pepper kind of like the chinese uh five color pepper but it's like purple and and red and extremely spicy so thank you sorry i don't remember your etsy name if i can find it i will put it up on the screen all right we're gonna move on to my baker creek order and let's see what i got here so spinach i got this because it is very very big very big spinach leaves Never, I grew spinach several years ago and it did pretty well. I grew it in the fall. Haven't really tried since. I got this atomic orange corn. Didn't have great luck with corn last year, but I got this because it's a drying corn and, and it's also really pretty. So even if I get just a few stalks, we can uh, use it for ornamental. Maple, quit licking the window, please. Use it as decoration for fall. <clears throat> But um, I've quit eating flour and I'm eating a lot of cornmeal. And I thought, oh, if I could get some drying corn, that would be pretty cool. And orange cornbread, that sounds pretty cool. Now, tomatoes. This is Barry's Crazy Cherry Tomato. I just got it because look at the picture. Can you imagine having a cluster of tomatoes like that? Because that looks pretty fun. So I got that one. Sun Gold Select. Never had these, but I have heard rave reviews. So, got those. They're supposed to have amazing flavor for a cherry tomato. I almost ordered the seed, and then I thought that it was just, like, just silly. So, I didn't. And it ended up being my free seed variety. So, I'm going to put this one in a pot on my porch and see how it does. Uh, because, look, just look. It's called a spoon tomato. It's micro mini fruit. Maybe the world's tiniest tomatoes. That's just special. We're gonna try that out. I'm really excited that I actually got that. 
Uh, <clears throat> I have had these. I grew these two years ago when they first come out with them on Baker Creek. Last year they did not have them available, but this year they do. Maple. She wants to say hello. Hello. Anyway, they're orange accordion tomatoes, and they were beautiful. I'll put up a picture of the ones that I grew. I was a little unimpressed by the flavor. Maybe that was just my growing conditions that year. It was so beautiful that I said I really, really want to grow it again. So, this is what we got. Hello, sweet doggy. Anyway, orange accordion tomato. This one, I'm sure you guys have seen or heard of if you order from Baker Creek. I've not had it, but since it's the favorite seed of Baker Creek, I got it. It is a wild boar farms tomato, crack resistant, and extraordinarily sweet. Look how cool those are. Had to try it. Had to see what the fuss is about. Kellogg's breakfast tomato. I do believe I grew this one time before and it was delicious, but other gardeners seem to really enjoy that one. I got these. Probably because I was shopping right before I went to bed and, and I got anything that said it was super sweet. I cut sugar out and I am trying to find sugar and sweetness in anything that I can because I'm quite frankly addicted. This is actually a sugar beet, what you would call a sugar beet, and it's so sweet that it can be used for making sugar, but I thought I would give it a try. It's almost time to be planning out in the next month or two planting out root vegetables outside so I'm gonna give that a try it says 50 days maybe we'll have some white sugar beets now on to the peppers we have again this says believed to be the sweetest of all peppers with a really thick flesh I just really wanted some sweet uh, some sweet veggies because I really want sugar. Also, Belle, my kitty cat, is here. Sweet bonnet. I have heard a lot about scotch bonnets. I never had them, but then I saw this and it said sweet bonnet. I tried not to get in, like a whole lot of hot peppers. Like, I love hot peppers, but I'm more than likely going to be eating more sweet peppers than hot peppers. And there's only, only so much hot sauce that you can eat. You can dry hot peppers, which I plan on doing and making some spice mixes, stuff like that. And then also, so I got, I got another free seed. I don't know how to say this, the Dattil, blazing hot. And we looked it up and it's like comparable to the habanero. So they look beautiful though. I'll grow one of them. The Corbachi pepper, just look how pretty that is. Rare, flavorful Turkish heirloom, uh, pickling type. And I think this one is spicy too. I tried to get, if they were spicy, I tried to get like the mildly spicy ones, like ones that I could just eat without dying <laughs> of the heat. But then I got this one, which is extremely spicy, but I got it because it's extremely rare and it's supposed to be the world's most um, expensive pepper. And I read somewhere that it goes in some places for $11,000 a pound, which seems ridiculous. Obviously you wouldn't be able to get that everywhere. You wouldn't be able to get that here in rural South Virginia, Southwest Virginia. It's the ahi pepper. Super tiny pepper from Peru, often grown as a house plant where the small peppers are harvested as needed in the kitchen. The pepper has a distinct fruity citrusy aroma and is an equal heat to the cayenne pepper, so very spicy. Let's see here. I got another melon. This one is a very small melon, three to four inches round. Uh, it's a Japanese. I thought that this one it would be a good variety for me to try since I had trouble with my watermelons getting ripe last year. So since those are smaller, maybe, you know, they'll, they'll be better. I've got the Honey Boat Del Delicata Squash. Never had this. I think I've seen these in the grocery store. This one of the sweetest squash varieties. I got this because I made some squash casserole for Thanksgiving and it was Sean's absolute favorite and he hates squash. And so I thought that that would be a really good variety to make squash casserole with since it's so sweet. And then I got this squash, big old pumpkin, French heirloom, big flat pumpkins up to 20 pounds, shaped like large wheels of cheese. I just thought that along with the, the green, blue Jaredell and that big pretty orange Cinderella pumpkin, that this would be beautiful. It just looks pretty and it's good for cooking. So heck yeah. So we got the Zucchino Ramp. Picante squash. I'm butchering that pronunciation. A famous Italian. 
hello a famous italian heirloom among the best summer squash very tender mildly rich flavor but also a great winter squash so that is why i got this now please get off of the incubator we do not need that happening today where was i i got this one because it is a summer squash and also a winter squash so if I don't have to worry about them getting too big like a zucchini getting tough and the seeds becoming inedible it just goes from being a delicious summer squash like a zucchini to being like a winter squash like a storing squash so i thought that was pretty cool they look huge so i'm probably gonna have to get some trellising for that and then flowers i don't know how to pronounce this the uh agastache uh, I, I don't know i was reading that you can make teas out of it i think that's probably why i got it uh, they're beautiful. I was looking at the catalog and they had like the different colors separately and I could not pick the color that I wanted so when I went on their website and I found they had all the colors in one packet I was very happy and got that. Just some nasturtiums. So an edible flower. They are kind of spicy. Um, I'm going to be using these like a trap crop so if you plant these around your crops around like on the understory of your plants in the garden pests will more than likely eat the nasturtiums before they eat your plants i don't know why they just think that they're tastier so if the hello if uh they're eating that then they're less likely to eat your plants and they're pretty and edible and last but not least we have more basil this is a peppery basil a hint of pine and citrus i thought this would be great to add to our basil tea that is all of the seeds that i bought this year so far in 2023 that's not counting my binders that i have from past years i've got some really cool seeds in here so stay tuned for the rest of the season. I will let you know what I'm growing, what I'm able to get in the ground. Uh, thanks for watching this very long-winded video. Uh, but I'm sure if you love seeds as much as I do, hopefully that was entertaining. And maybe give you some idea of what these seed companies have. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will be back on here. I don't know if this is going to be uploaded first or my incubator video is going to be uploaded first but after this uh, uh later this evening when it gets dark i'm going to be candling the eggs because it has been a week and i i kind of done a little bit of candling um a couple of days ago and i think we have four eggs that are not so great but i kept them just to be sure and one of them is a really great example of of what you don't want to keep in your incubator so yeah, uh, I wanted to show that to you guys just so that you can see it and know what you should be looking out for. And yeah, so I'll see you in those videos. Bye, guys. I don't know if I can do this with a dog on my lap or not. Go. Thank you.